Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new video for The Mandalorian Season 3. The Star Wars people just made a big announcement. They also talked about some of the live action spin-off series that might start filming really soon as well too. So we'll break it all down. I'm also doing videos for all the episodes, so if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all those. We'll do a Disney Plus membership giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for The Mandalorian Season 3 on the video. So spoiler warning for everything that's happened on The Mandalorian Season 2 so far through Episode 2. So starting with number 10, biggest news by far is probably Deadline reporting that Boba Fett is getting his own miniseries. They didn't say how many episodes that would be, but it gives you a pretty good idea for what his character arc is going to be during The Mandalorian Season 2. So first big prediction, pretty safe bet that he eventually reclaims his armor from the Mandalorian by force. He's always been something of an antagonist in the Star Wars universe. The Mando is supposed to be the good, honorable character. Boba Fett has mostly just been portrayed as the galaxy's most fearsome bounty hunter, and that's about it. So number nine, either in the season two finale or sometime around the finale, he, Moff Gideon, and the Mandalorian will probably have a classic Western three-way Mexican standoff. I referenced the good, the bad, and the ugly during my Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 video because that's where the classic trope of the three-way standoff comes from. Every time you see that gif of The Office with them doing it, obviously it's funny, but they're parodying the good, the bad, and the ugly movie. So in that context, Mando would be the good, the Clint Eastwood character, Moff Gideon would be the bad, and Boba Fett would be the ugly. Also really cool, Clint Eastwood easter egg. When they were originally creating the Boba Fett character, they used Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name character as the main inspiration. Not only did it inspire the persona of Boba Fett in Empire Strikes Back, but also some of his look, the classic western gunslinger, but make it science fiction. That's why during Season 1 Episode 5, the title was quote unquote The Gunslinger. It was a reference to Mando, who they created based on the Boba Fett character. He's a gunslinger, but it's also a reference to the original Boba Fett himself. You can hear the spurs on his boots jingling as he walks up in that post credit scene to Ming-Na's body, the same way Boba Fett's spurs jingle when he walks like a classic gunslinger. The sound of the Spurs was meant to be the huge clue for who he was supposed to be before they confirmed Boba Fett was going to be a big character in Season 2. Number 8, Boba Fett will probably collect the bounty on Baby Yoda, capturing him for Moff Gideon in the finale, or by the finale. They mentioned Empire Strikes Back when talking about the Mandalorian Season 2 as inspiration and what happened at the end of Empire Strikes Back. Boba Fett captured Han Solo and went to collect the bounty on him from Jabba the Hutt. It was a huge downer ending, setting the stage for a huge rescue operation at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, the next movie. So think about how that might inform the Mandalorian Season 2 finale. Boba Fett captures Baby Yoda and probably gives him to Moff Gideon, collects the mountain of credits for his bounty, and then takes his armor back from Mando. Number 7, so that they can open The Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 1 with a very Return of the Jedi-esque rescue operation to save Baby Yoda from Moff Gideon. Also, when you think about it, Moff Gideon wouldn't be a very compelling villain if he couldn't make good on his threats, and he's already declared that he's taking Baby Yoda and that the Mandalorian has no idea what he really is and what he means to the future of the galaxy. So like Darth Vader chopping off Luke's hand and the Empire striking back against the Rebellion for destroying the Death Star in A New Hope, Moff Gideon has to get some kind of revenge against the Mandalorian for making him take the L so hard during the Season 1 finale. Number six, Boba Fett will also probably get the Slave 1 ship back. It would be weird to spend so much time in Season 2 Episode 1 and Episode 2 setting him up getting his classic armor back, reclaiming his identity as the Boba Fett you know from the movies, to not also give him back the Slave 1. And if you think about it, between the time he's spent in the Sarlacc pit and the time that he's been out, he's been stuck on Tatooine for the past five years. Based on the end of Episode 1, it seems like he's been pretending to be a Tusken Raider since he escaped from the Sarlacc Pit. He's dressed in their robes, he has their traditional weapons on his back, so it's just implied that he's been pretending to be one in the episode. So if he's been with them this whole time, that means that the Slave 1 would be wherever he left it at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. So it's really just a matter of him tracking it down and taking it back from whoever's either stolen it now or thrown it in another junk pile. The same way the Millennium Falcon mysteriously wound up on Jakku like it had been sitting in a scrapyard for years when they came along. Even though that didn't really make a lot of sense, like how did the Millennium Falcon end up here? We don't want to ask those questions, that's like a whole other video. The number five, after collecting the bounty on Baby Yoda, making him rich again, Boba Fett probably takes his money, his ship, and his armor and then heads off into the events of that Boba Fett miniseries. 
They didn't really say when it's going to take place in the timeline. It could always take place in the past, but it sounds like they're setting him up to go off into this special miniseries. Deadline's recent report said that that could start filming as soon as this year, but they didn't say when it would premiere. I'm assuming sometime after The Mandalorian Season 3, which I think is going to premiere around this time next year. So the Boba Fett series would either be at the end of 2021 or sometime in the first half of 2022. There were some reports earlier this year that Boba Fett wouldn't be a huge character on The Mandalorian Season 2, but he could become a bigger character in future seasons. That's still possible, but it sounds like most of the attention on his character would be in this Boba Fett miniseries. Number four, the story of the Boba Fett miniseries will probably be more of a traditional bounty hunter saga, the way that The Mandalorian series started out. Now it's kind of turned into more of a series of fetch quests involving Baby Yoda and world building this part of the Star Wars universe with a bunch of new characters and lore between the events of the original trilogy in the new movies. But because they're bringing Boba Fett back to redeem him as a character, it would also probably be about him reclaiming the title of the galaxy's most fearsome bounty hunter. Remember the live action Star Wars Underworld series that George Lucas almost made after Revenge of the Sith? They filmed a ton of test footage. The Boba Fett series will probably feel a little bit more like that was supposed to be. They wrote over 50 full episodes of that. All the scripts were ready to go. The reason why they pivoted from that live action series though to the animated Clone Wars series was mostly because of the budget. Because of the technology at the time, George Lucas wanted to make it look exactly like the movies look, the prequel movies, and in order to do that, they would have had to spend about 20 to 25 million dollars per episode, which at the time was just astronomical. Nowadays, the technology has caught up, but they still spend 8 to 10 million dollars per an episode of the Mandalorian series, so it's still a lot of money. Number three, the other live action series they reported was the live action Ahsoka series. That also implies a similar trajectory for her character during The Mandalorian season two. Like she helps the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda on their quest, but then afterwards Ahsoka goes off on her own mission. I know everyone wants to see more of the Clone Wars and the Star Wars Rebels characters show up in the live action series like Thrawn, Ezra Bridger, Sabine Wren. Those were all characters that they would probably cover in an Ahsoka series because the last time we saw her, she and Sabine were heading into the unknown regions to look for him. And two, big prediction, everyone's speaking about Ahsoka, wondering when we're going to finally see her during The Mandalorian Season 2. Dave Filoni, who created the Ahsoka character with George Lucas, wrote and directed The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 5. So right now, if you're laying bets, that would be the episode to bet on. She's being played by Rosario Dawson, who reportedly signed a contract that would allow her to cameo as Ahsoka on a bunch of other Disney Plus live action series in different parts of the timeline. I can't wait to see what kind of digital wizardry they use to show off some badass Ahsoka fight scenes. But Ahsoka's in her early 40s during the events of the Mandalorian series, so she's still pretty young at this part of the timeline. She never had the opportunity to meet Luke Skywalker, at least so far, but Luke did eventually learn about her and her history as his father Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. It was just that for the most part she had been out in the unknown regions during the events of Return of the Jedi while Luke was training Leia and then later searching for Jedi to create his new academy. That's actually what he's doing right now while all this stuff on the Mandalorian series is happening. It's just that he's in a different part of the galaxy and right now Luke is around his late 20s while this is all happening so he's still pretty young. But number one, biggest prediction about the Darksaber since we still haven't seen a lot of Moff Gideon in season two yet. Obviously we're going to learn how he took it from Bo-Katan Kryze, which I think is who he took it from. And Mando will almost get his hands on it in present day, but the way Giancarlo Esposito talks about the Darksaber and the fight scenes that he's been filming with it, Mando probably doesn't take it from him yet. But eventually, yes, I totally think that we'll wind up with a situation where the Mandalorian Din Djarin wields the Darksaber, at least for a little while. Then because a lot of the series sounds like it's the redemption of the Mandalorian culture, they're in hiding right now, they need to rally, he'll probably pass it on to whoever winds up leading the Mandalorian clans again. And eventually, all the Mandalorians will formally recognize Baby Yoda as a Mandalorian himself, paying off the theory that the title of the series, The Mandalorian, also refers to Baby Yoda, not just Din Djarin. But what I'll do is when we get the Mandalorian Season 2 finale in December, I'll do a new Season 3 predictions video just changing things based on what ends up happening in the rest of the episodes. Everyone leave all your predictions in the comments, and there will be more bonus videos this week, but leave all your requests in the comments as well. Click here for my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 video and click here for my Mandalorian Luke Skywalker video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is The Way.